for me. If you got a gi, go ahead and fix it. I'm not judging if you're in your pajamas. I'm just stoked you're here. Guys, thank you so much for coming in and training with us. It's incredible to see everyone. I really enjoy getting to share the mats, right? Even if we're miles away, it feels like you're right here. So I'm stoked and I'm really excited to train. Tonight, I'd like to get kind of detailed in some pretty advanced back attacks. So we'll go through our warm up and get straight into some heavy technique. Remember, if you have a question, please wave at the screen for me. Uh, you can click and raise your hand on a button. Jordan will be able to grab you in the chat. To connect it. If you get lost, just keep listening. So as I'm watching and helping you drill, I'll still be talking the technique through. So hop in at whatever part you remember, and you'll be able to get right back into the flow. All right, my friends? We'll go ahead and bow in. Very nice. Now, I'm going to bring the screen down. We'll go ahead and hit a little break ball. Let's get to the floor. I'm going to move my stuffy Steve for a second. Perfect. Nice. All right, my friends, if you're in an apartment, please be uh, cognizant of your neighbors. They ain't trying to hear your break falls. Uh, be careful if you're on your floor, right? Really important. No back of the hand on the break ball. The, the ground hurts. Palms down, guys. I'd like to get 10 little break balls just to warm up our back. Go ahead and get started. You hear me yeah. count the Portuguese. If you want to go along with that, please do. Don't judge me. My Portuguese ain't great. All right, my friends, get started. We'll get it. Oh, my and Deutsch, and Prince, Quattro, and Cinco, Six, Sechen, Puerto, Nave, Beige. Nice. Keeping that hip rock motion, let's go with our triangles. Make sure you get those hips off the floor. We'll sling them up, and oh. Make sure we're alternating triangles. Deutsch. And trades. Dorsiflex those feet for me. So we're closing down that triangle. Biting with our hamstrings. And sit. Oit. Nave. Dave. Nice. We'll stay here. Get a little space. Let's go through our Kimuras. Rocking up onto our elbow. I'm grabbing my wrist watch. Let's pick up those hips. Roll across our shoulders. Hit the other side. And oh, Deutsch. Trace. Quatsch. Sink. Set. Set. Oit. Nave, Dage. Very nice. We'll sit all the way up. All the way up. We can post our hand behind us. Let's go into some stand up and base. Remember, my lead hand. Sometimes it's going to be covering. Sometimes it's going to be checking distance. The thing I'm really picky about is getting my hips off the floor. No stand up and base where I'm dragging my knee. It's going to take too long. I've got to pick up my hips. If you need to hit your knee here, totally fine. We'll stand all the way up. And we're back down into that break fall. Remember, if you're in an apartment, I'm probably just going to sit down, break fall, up onto my right side, and we'll run it again. Boom. And we'll bring it down. All the way up. And George. Still on our right side. And Trace. Picking up that pace a little bit as you get comfortable. Quattro. Don't kick your dog. Don't kick the wall. Cinco. Let's switch sides. Break fall. Onto our left hand. My right hand protects. My left leg will kick all the way up. You can't see anything. And boom. Left hand pulls, right hand checks. Pick up those hips and kick. Noise. Uh oh, we're not gonna help. Trace. And quattro. One more, my friends. And Cinco. 
Nice. All right. So we'll catch our breath for a second. Let me get my wind back. Let's get out our dummy. If you got a partner, lower belt, go ahead and lay down for us. We're going to start with the Toriando pass. Now, if you have the dummy, you're going to have to be a little bit careful with your pressing. If you have a partner, it's going to be feet on hips. We're going to grab at the pants. We're going to back out and put the feet on the floor. Now, because I got a stuffy Steve, my hands are going to hit the mat. If I just have a big pillow and a knee, I'm right on the corners of the pillow. Remember, we talked about shuffle to one direction. If I shuffle left, my left knee hits, my left shoulder hits, and now I would like to add in the hop over since we're already a little familiar with it. If you got a dummy, you just got to pretend that your partner pushed your head to the other side because they're trying to keep us from pinning them to the floor. So like Brayden was talking about with his wrestling, bad things happen if I can get your back flat on the mat. So your opponent is going to try really hard not to let that happen. After the pass, here's one of those times he'll try to stay on his side by pushing our head across his body. We're going to post it to the floor. Remember, whatever side my head posts on, that hand will hit the ground like a push-up. My free hand, the one that's behind me, is going to curl palm to the ceiling because I don't want to hurt my shoulder when I jump over. So I'm not going to post it. We're not doing a flip. Instead, we're going to put our shoulder down, and that's going to let me walk over my partner's legs, Toriando to the other side. Once I'm here, if I have a partner, they'll go ahead and regard, frame, bridge, shrimp, switch their feet, stand up and play again. If I got the dummy, hop it up to my feet, rotate back, and now we go to the other side. So upper belt, go ahead and get started for me. You're going to run the rep with me. Two hands on the pants grips, disconnect. Feet to floor, shuffle to the right. Your right knee hits, your right shoulder hits. Now, I'm going to post my left hand on the mat because my head's going to come to my right hand side. Pick up those hips, left hand's going to go palm to the ceiling, walk over the legs, side control on the other side. I would hop up, and now I'll run it again. Let's go to the other side, Toriando to the left. Bring your head to the left, post your left hand, right hand down, shoulder on the pillow. Pick up those hips, hop to the other side. We'll stand up, run it again. Keep going, upper belt. I'm going to get us all in grid view so I can see how it's going. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Let me turn on a clock. Sometimes I get so stoked watching everybody get good reps, I forget to keep track of time. So you might be doing a gang of extra reps. I'm sorry. Starts with the Toriando. From the Toriando, we'll shuffle one direction, shoulder to the floor. We'll bring our head to the same side we passed on, post it on the ground, and this is going to allow us to hop over the legs to the other side. So my opponent, who's trying really hard not to give up the guard pass on their right, ends up giving up the guard pass on the left. There we go. Ooh, very nice. All right, James, you passing Lana's guard? What's up? There we go. Nice work, Quan. Very nice reps. Guys, we're, we're just getting these movements, getting our jiu-jitsu muscles going, remembering what it feels like. So the reps are going to be a little different depending on what you're working with. That's okay. You know what the Toriando looks like. Perfect. Bring your head to the same side of the pass. Post the hand, hopping over. Very nice. Keep going, Braden. Let me see another rep. 
Hey, very nice, youngin. So you'll see some of us feel pretty comfortable. You might almost do a headstand there, like really picking up those legs, hopping to the other side. I'm super down for that. I'm also totally cool with just picking up our hips and walking our legs over. You might even practice using your shins to track your partner's legs as you walk to the other side. So it doesn't have to be a big athletic movement. We're just pivoting because our partner's committing really hard to one side of their body, giving us the pass on the other side. There we go. And time. See, look, I got so excited. I was watching all these reps. We'll switch bottom to top if you have a partner. If you're with your dummy, that's not your partner, homie. I'm talking about your stuffy Steve. Then you get to do an extra round. Good for you. I'm excited. Ready. And work time. First, it's pants grips. Disconnect from the feet. Bring the feet to the floor. Shuffle to one side. Shoulder to their belly. Your partner is gonna push your head to the same side that you passed on, which is gonna cause us to post our hand, hop our hips to the other side, chasing the back exposure. Very nice. Oh no, there's dad foot locking the youngin. Poor youngin. There we go. Very nice, my friends. Let's see. Mm, nice work, Coach Roxanne. Who else we got? Who else we got? Okay. Is that Tyler? Hey, there she is. Let's see it, Tyler. Good Toriando. Very nice. Dimitri chose a good defense. Hop to the other side, chasing the back. Very nice, Tyler. All right, who else we got? Flynn, I can't see you, buddy. I hope you're getting them reps. Nice. Perfect, let me switch to the other side. Hey, Coach Troy, what's up, my friends? Man, grab you a pillow, stuff it in a key top, man. Let's get to work. <laughs> nice, youngin. Dad's gonna push the head, perfect. So we hop to the other side. Very nice back exposure. Perfect. Hey. Now, hey, there we go. You're gonna flip over sometimes. It happens. I, I, that's okay. The, you're gonna practice that though. We'll, we'll, look, we'll practice that next week. We'll, we'll get athletic there. Perfect. Nice, Quan. Super controlled, man. I appreciate that pace. And time. Good work, my friends. Let's add another step, okay? So I don't want to forget what we just did. We're going to keep it. We're going to Toriando. We're backing off of the guard to lose that foot contact, so now I can move the legs. I jam the feet. Shuffle to the right, my right knee hits, my right shoulder long darts my partner. They're going to push our head to the same side of the pass. So we post, pick up our hips. Now you might walk, you might float, doesn't matter. We're going to get to this side. Now from here, guys, like we talked about, because we've kind of slowed things down, because I have a partner who, uh, doesn't need a gang of reps. I can be really picky with my details. A detail on our side control off of a Toriando pass. Notice how your hands are separate, right? You have one hand that's punching towards the legs. You have another hand that feels like it could come up here and get an underhook. And that's what we want it to do, right? So my inside hand is gonna stay. I'm gonna lay on it. Because if I pick it up now, I run the risk of my partner being able to move their hips away because this outside control doesn't stop him from getting on his side, right? So instead, I'd rather keep this arm on the grip. So if my partner tries to turn towards me, they can't pull this bottom leg. I can keep it towards my hip. They stay stuck. 
I don't care if he wants to move this outside. Because this hand guides, we're going to slide up as an underhook. Once I have an underhook, I'm going to go four fingers to the shoulder. Now that I'm anchored to the upper body, I can release my hands, pummel it to the outside, and we're going to come up on a nice high side control. Now, from the side control, let's get our knee on belly arm bar we worked on Monday night. My top hand, the hand that's in the cross face, it's going to go thumb in the lapel. And four fingers make a fist that are going to punch the floor. Pro tip. I don't want this fist to be so close to me that there's a gap between my wrist and my partner's neck. Because if there's a gap and they can move, then their whole body can move, right? So when you thread this grip, make sure you keep that in constant contact with the side of their neck. So there's no chance of them moving towards you. And remember, anytime my opponent rolls away, I've won, I've created back exposure, I'm not gonna stop you from doing that but I'm not gonna let you face it. I don't wanna see your guard again. So we're gonna keep some pressure here. I'm even gonna use the extension of my arm to push into the side of the neck. My other hand is gonna come off the underhook and go four fingers on the pants. Again, we're gonna go knuckles to the floor. Another pro tip here. Because I want to make a fist, because I'm going to use it in a post to bring myself up, for some reason my brain thinks I should bring my elbow out like a bench press. Uh, let's not do that, right? Remember that there's some big concepts in jiu-jitsu. One of them, you never want your elbows away from your ribs. So even as I'm coming up in the on belly, if I show this as I post, that really flexible guy, she's going to start bringing feet in here and stepping on my bicep and recreating the spider guard, the collar and sleeve guard, just from showing the step, right? Just giving them somewhere to step on. Even just their knee here is gonna be a problem when I have to keep fighting and I'll probably lose a position against a skilled opponent. So when you bring this grip to the hip, we're gonna take this elbow and drag it across the belly, like a bar on a roller coaster, right? I'm going right across their stomach. So I don't run the risk of their legs coming inside of this arm here. Notice that I'll turn my grip, thumb to the ceiling. When it goes thumb to the ceiling, my elbow can hit the belly. Now I'm ready to post on the hips, pop up to our knee on belly. We're gonna do that same around the world that we worked on Monday. Remember, you got a couple options here. If you're with a partner, they're gonna start to shrink away. And as they get on their side, you're going to step up, push the head to the floor, step around, swing to knee on belly on the other side. Once we're in knee on belly, and I'll show it on the key again, or on the dummy, we'll talk about it. We're going to attack the near side arm. So you're in your grips. You got all sorts of grips you can play here. The one we're going to work on for the arm bar, near side lapel. I'm going to open the near side lapel, the one that's right next to me between my legs. Open, four fingers slide into the grip. This grip's a little different. I don't want it to get all the way behind the neck because now my elbow gets stuck inside my hips. The choke becomes difficult. I want this one to be a little loose, so it's going to stay more on the side. I don't have to bury it super deep. This is going to allow me to pick up on the posture which in later days will start to turn into back attacks. But for today, it's gonna to allow me to really isolate this arm. No matter what this grip feels like, they have to come defend. Because if they don't, we go right into our chokes. So when our partner defends this grip, we're gonna get a sleeve control. Don't mind Stuffy Steve here, he ain't been working out. He's a little skinny these days. My left leg, I'm gonna post this fist on the floor because that's going to allow me to pick up my hips. I don't want my butt to go to the ceiling. I just want to pick up my hips enough to kick. I want to bring this left leg, the knee on belly leg, to the armpit. Once I've kicked that shin to the armpit, I start to punch this arm across the face. Remember, I'm not really looking for it to go low. I'd rather it stay high because my partner stays stuck. I'm just going to turn it like a big pendulum here. As I push it over, I step over the face. Now, we're gonna pinch our knees. 
as we sit back. Here comes our first arm bar. A ton of ways to finish on that picky. You might go classic. You might go around your own lapel, hook the leg and fall to your side and finish. Either way is going to work. Whichever one you want to work on for today. Let's run it all again. Upper belt, you're first. Lower belt, lay down for me. If you got your gi dummy, just follow along. I'm going to show the dummy version this time as well. It starts with the same guard pass flow. Toriando, disconnect from the guard. Shuffle to the right. Right knee down, right shoulder down. Our partner's going to push our head to the same side we pass on. So we pose, pick up our hips, pop over to the other side. Now here's where we get picky and Toriando. Remember, it's our far arm, our cross body arm that goes under hook first. Now my inside arm, the one I'm laying on, can slide through, cross face. From the cross face, my cross face arm, which is my left hand, is gonna go thumb grip in the lapel, knuckles to the floor, but not yet. Just keep it tight. Right hand, pants grip, elbow across the belly, punch the mat, pop up to knee on belly. From knee on belly, if my partner starts to shrimp away, I around the world. If I have the E dummy, it's gonna be the same thing. Step up, step into the top of the dummy's head, bring my knees together, rotate my feet over the head, back to knee on belly. Now on your side, knee on belly, here we go. Open the lapel, four fingers on the near side collar. They have to defend the choke. We'll go get sleeve control if we're using the dummy. I punch the mat so I can kick my knee on belly leg to the armpit. That knee should get right behind my elbow. Start to walk over the head, keeping their arm pulled up nice and high. I pinch my knees, sit down. Curl my leg around the head, both hands to the arm. Finish. I'll hop off. I'll run it again. Keep going, guys. I'm going to start watching while I call it out. Upper belt first. You're going to be going for two minutes. Ready. War time. Start with the Toriando. Disconnect. Perfect. From the disconnect, we'll pass to the right. My right knee will hit, my right shoulder will lawn dart, and I will pin my partner to the floor. Once I got him on the mat, I'm going to let my head move to the same side I passed on. I'm gonna post my hand, hop over the legs to side control on the other side. Very nice. Now here's where I get picky. My far arm, my cross body arm goes first, underhook. Then my near side arm will slide up to the cross face. Off of the cross face, perfect. I'll get a thumb in the collar, make a fist right under the neck with my cross face arm. My back hand, which is probably my right hand, is gonna go belt grip, elbow to the belly, post the floor, hop up to knee on belly. From my knee on belly, we're gonna let our partner either get onto their side or we're gonna spin the dummy. We're gonna push the head down, step towards the crown of the gi, of the dummy's head, knees together, rotate those feet over the head, knee on belly on the other side. Very nice, Thomas, there we go. Let's face the head though. Face the head for me, so left knee, Thomas. Yes, there we go, perfect. Now let's attack this near side arm. We're gonna open the near side lapel. We're gonna thread a four finger grip. Our partner has to defend. If they don't defend the choke, we'll finish the fight right there. When they bring that near side hand in to try to get on our choking arm, we're gonna get sleeve control, pull it to the ceiling. With this free hand that's in the collar, it's gonna stay punching on the mat so I can pick up my hips and kick my shin into the armpit. Like I'm gonna hide my ankle right in the armpit, my toes underneath their shoulder. There we go. Now we're gonna start dragging that arm across their neck while we walk over the head with our outside leg. We'll have a seat, pinch our knees. Here's our tasty treat, Armbar City. 
Hip in and finish. Very nice. We'll hop up, run the whole chain again. Let's do it on the other side. So still the upper belt. If you have a partner, if you're using your dummy, you just keep going. Make sure my clock's still going. Oh yeah. Let's get one more rep, Toriando. Off the Toriando, you're gonna post your head and hop to the other side. Once we're on the other side, we're gonna secure the side control with the far side pin. From the far side pin, we're gonna to get to our knee on belly. So we're gonna get a grip behind the neck, a grip on the waist, punch the floor, hop up to knee on belly. Knee on belly is gonna spin us around the world. We're gonna step over the head, both knees to the chest, spin to the other side. Perfect, just getting them back down to the floor, right? Because they were trying to get away. Now we're gonna open up that near side lapel, threaten the choke. They have to defend the choke, and when they do, we'll pull up that near side arm, really trying to get that elbow off the floor. As long as I have that arm long, there's no shrimping away. We're gonna kick them in the armpit, walk our free leg over the head, have a seat, arm bar city. Very nice, my friends. Nice work, Coach Roxanne, very nice. And let's switch, guys, bottom to top. Bottom to top. All right, it will start first with the Toriando pass. Very nice, two pants grips. Disconnect the feet from our hips so we can pass. Our partner's gonna try to dump our head to the near side so they can shrimp away. We're gonna trap their legs, post our hand and head and hop the guard to the other side. Now let's secure the far side pin. Your top arm, your far arm will go first. It's gonna go get an underhook. Grip up on that shoulder. That way my near side arm, the one I'm laying on, can let go and go cross face. Very nice. Now with the pin, I start setting up my grips for knee on belly. Thumb in the collar right behind the neck. That's gonna let me go four fingers, fist to floor. My free hand on the back side is gonna go pants grip, belt grip, somewhere low on the hip. Close that elbow, four fingers to the mat, hop up to knee on belly. Perfect. Now with my knee on belly, I'm gonna let my partner either start to escape or I'm just gonna spin the dummy. We're gonna go around the world. Click our knees, step over the head. Try not to kick your partner's face off. Swing to knee on belly on the other side. Very nice. Now that we've got them on the wrong side, we're gonna set up the choke. Open up that near side collar. Four finger grip slides in. They have to defend the choke. Go ahead and practice the chokes on their guys. If they don't defend the choke, man, like, the fight's over, right? Once we've thrown the choke and they defend, we grab that near side sleeve, ripping that elbow off the mat, bringing that hand to the ceiling because now I've limited their ability for their upper body to shrimp away. Kick them in the armpit with that knee on belly leg. Very nice. Very nice. Good work, Coach E. We're gonna start walking over the head, sitting down into our arm bar. Very nice. Hey, hopping up, let's run it again. Back to work, back to work. I know the pace is high, but I want you to sweat a little bit. There we go. Perfect. Nice, hey, nice hop over. Secure our side control. This will get us to knee on belly. From knee on belly, we're gonna spin the world, sliding over the top of their head, setting up knee on belly on the other side. Feel how their hip is up, and we're gonna use that knee on belly to bring it back down, back flat to mat. Perfect. Here we go with our near side choke, threading the choke. They have to defend, here comes our arm bar. Nice. Hey, very nice, Braden. Nice arm bar, my friend. Perfect. Thomas, how'd that feel? Give me a thumbs up. That feel good? Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Ooh, finish up this rep. Finish up this rep. You got 10 seconds. Pass. Hop over. Knee on belly. Spin the world. 
Attack the choke. Near side arm bar. Very nice. Bring it in, my friends. Perfect. Whew. There we go. Catch our breath. Might be a little winded after that. I ain't mad. It's been a long time. And let's see. I'm going to get... Oh. Mm, I'm messing it up. There we go. All right, my friends, make sure we can see because we're going to get a little detail tonight. We're going to start off on our partner's back. Perfect. Now, maybe you got a pillow and a gi, no worries. Just set it in our lap. All we're going to be looking at is an underhook and an overhook. Now, I want to be very specific about this. We learn the seatbelt, right? This grip, this style of grip where we have an overhook and an underhook. We learn it a lot from the perspective of nogi. Um, hold on, my guys. Ah, there we go. Get these things down a little bit. We learn it as a nogi thing, and that's where we're trapping our own wrists. I love this, right? I love this because this allows me lots of grips, lots of wrist control. We start to get into like uh, the straight jacket controls and the, these different grips on this uh, back attack series. And you'll see like the Donaher squad run. The, these things are fantastic. But I think that if you're going to roll in the gi, we want to be able to exploit that same setup, but from a gi perspective. So what I'm talking about is when we go for the seatbelt, we're still going to trap our top wrist. I do not want to let my partner have this hand. If I set up like this and they get this wrist control, my overhook, I'm never going to finish the choke, right? They're going to constantly be bringing my arm to the other side. It's not the end of the world, but they're in a defense, right? I'm not offensive any longer. So, and I don't want to lose the, my ability to be offensive because this is it, right? This is where I want to be in jiu-jitsu. A, B, C, always be choking. Always attack from the back. I don't care what else I can do. If I see the back, we go there, right? Because I can be the safest. My partner can't hurt me here. And I also have, because I have such a safe position, I have the ability to look for the finish as well. He's also his weakest here. So he's both weak defensively and offensively. I want the back. When I'm talking about the gi, though, I want to get the lapel grips. So we're going to still trap the top wrist. But we're going to do it a little different. We're going to come down here and go grab the, the pad of our palm, right? I want to get my finger right where my wrist and my palm, they merge, whatever that is. I'm sure someone can help us later with this wording. But I want to get here like this. There's this little hook here, a little where my hand starts to uh, get a little 3D, right, compared to the flat of my wrist. I want to get in that groove, and then I'll get four fingers around the pad of my palm. And now I'm going to close this fist. The idea here, guys, is that I want to be able to keep my thumb to my partner's chest at all times. And this will allow me to take this thumb and constantly fish for the lapel, right? So even if my partner is stacked up on my arms, I'm not letting them see this hand. This hand is staying thumb to the chest, and it's constantly stirring the mac and cheese so I can get my thumb into the lapel. Once I have my thumb on the lapel, I'm still not going to let go of the top wrist. Not yet. I want to see uh, what's available here. Something that I think is really important. If my partner plays loose with their elbows, then we're going to run that first choke we worked on Monday, where we're combing the hair, old school bow and arrow. Very common for this person to still want to be fighting our hands, right? They're not trying to give up the choke. So a lot of times I'm here not trying to finish, just trying to stay attached. So even if my partner was to slide off, and because I have this position, I never let go of the harness. I'm always able to reset back to the back, right? So sometimes it behooves me to go a little slower, right? You're on the back. Take your time. Stay connected. Now, once I've decided to move towards the finish, the first choke I want everyone to always look for is that cross lapel. 
It works really well because my partner's gonna be fighting hands. I'm not letting them see this hand at all. So they're gonna be jamming this top hand off because they want this one. So this grip doesn't have to be choking yet, right? It just has to connect. This hand's gonna slide down and then the choke starts. But before, the reason why I'm taking my time is, guys, sometimes when you dip your thumb in the mac and cheese, you're way too low, right? You can see on Stuffy Steve, this is gonna take forever to become a choke. So I'm gonna hang out, chin to the neck, and I'm gonna walk my right hand under my left hand to where it ends up like climbing on top of my left hand. This will allow me to take my left hand and drop straight to the lapel, the choke is on. I don't wanna finish, but my partner knows they're caught in the choke now. So I expect a lot of defense. I expect a lot of hand fighting and hips trying to slide their back to the mat. I'm going to oblige that, right? I'm going to scoot my hips back a bit. Really important, especially for my fighters that don't feel quite as flexible. Get you a little space. The choke's on. I don't care if he hops the hooks. I'm still gonna finish. What I'm looking for is a little room so my leg that's on the same side as my overhook or the choking arms, right now that's my right hand, my right leg is gonna hop out. It might even step on the hip because my left leg is gonna curl the belly. That's why I wanted a little space. When I'm really stuck to my partner, there's no way I can move my legs. If I scoot my butt back, now I can move my feet. And even a big tall guy like me has got plenty of room to hook the shoulder. Now you'll notice once we hook the shoulder, I'm crossing my ankles. I don't like to finish this choke with my feet open. The pressure goes everywhere. I want to take the pressure and Narrow it, narrow it, narrow it, narrow it until I get to this, this single point, and that's where everything I got focuses, right? So you might have a crazy strong neck, but if my whole body is acting on just this quarter inch, man, I don't care, you're going to sleep, right? So we're going to extend our arms and our legs. My wrists are gonna cross, my ankles are gonna extend, and we'll finish. Now, Let's work through this one together, right? A lot of details there. Upper belt, you're first. Up on the back. Perfect. We're going to start off in our classic seat belt grip. One arm overhook, left arm underhook. I'm going to hide my right wrist, and that's going to allow me to take my right thumb and start to stir the mac and cheese until I get inside the lapel. Once I catch the lapel grip, my right hand's gonna walk up the fabric all the way to the top of the jacket. My left hand's gonna walk down, finding the lapel. Once I'm connected, I'm still in the seatbelt position, I'm just doing it through lapel grips, right? So even if my partner was to start their escape, I'm still on the back, I'll be able to reset, right? We'll talk about that more next week. From this position, my head stays on the shoulder, but my butt scoots back, scooting back, scooting back, and you'll notice that will let you take your right leg and swing it out wide. At the same time, your left leg will swing across the belly and we'll throw that right hook over the top of the shoulder, cross our ankles. I'm still sat up, I'm not trying to fall back. I'm gonna extend all four limbs and pinch my knees together. Finish. We'll hop back up, right back on the back and we'll run it again. I'll talk through this rep one more time, guys. Our top arm, we're gonna hide the top wrist, your right wrist, you're gonna take that right thumb, put it on their chest, stir the mac and cheese until you find the lapel grip. Now start walking that lapel grip under your left hand until you get nice and high. Your left hand can slide off and grab the far lapel anywhere. It could be all the way down at the belly, it's still gonna work. Now I keep my chin on the chest, I walk my butt back. With my hips further away, now my right leg can hop off, my left leg can go across the stomach, and that right leg's gonna hook the top shoulder. We'll cross our ankles. If my right leg's over the shoulder, it's the bottom leg in the cross ankle position. That allows me to apply a maximum pressure, right? Pinch the knees, extend the legs, extend the arms, finish. All right, keep going. I wanna come see some reps. Get everybody in the view. There we go.
So we're on the back, seat belt grip. That top arm, we're gonna hide the wrist. Perfect. We're gonna take that thumb and jam it in their chest. Stir mac and cheese until you find that lapel grip. And then walk that grip up the collar. Your left hand will naturally fall off. Find the far lapel. Nice. Now keep that shoulder pressure forward for me, Coach Roxana. Really lean it forward and then walk your hips back. That's gonna allow you to open up that right leg. Left leg will go across the belly. Right leg will hook the shoulder. And now we can really hammer down on this cross collar choke, extending our legs, extending our hands, and finish. Perfect. Now, if you were in Professor Elliott's no gi class last night, you will recognize that the triangle from the back is closely tied to this position, right? And maybe we'll stay after class and look at it. Grab it next week. Still going upper belt, still going. Hop on the back, run it for me again. Perfect, let me get my clock going. Hide the top arm, right thumb to the chest. Stir the thumb until you get that lapel grip. Now start walking that lapel grip higher and higher. Your left hand will fall to the other lapel. Chin to the shoulder, scoot the hips back so you can be a little more mobile with your legs. Step on that hip, throw that right leg out, throw the left leg over, hook the shoulder, cross the ankles, money time. Easy peasy choke. Now if you see the triangle there, you might, I'm totally down for you to try it upper belt. Perfect, right back to work. Let's get another rep. Nice. Hey, there we go, Lana. You're a great Uki, my friend. Nice job. There we go. Coach Dimitri, thumbs up. It feels good. Perfect. Perfect. Nice. Coach Drew, throwing the legs out. Hook the shoulder. Other leg across the belly for us. There we go. Because once those ankles cross, Choke City, triangles there as well. You may have to navigate a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I see you. And let's see. Nice, Jake. Looking the shoulder across the ankles. Whole body chokes, right? Our entire musculoskeleton system all focused on a quarter of an inch space around their neck. That's jujitsu, my friend, maximizing our leverage. All right, let's switch, bottom to top. Bottom to top, lower belt, you're getting started. Sorry guys, we're gonna have to go over just a little bit. I wanna make sure everybody gets their reps. Perfect, all right, we're in there, harness grip. So your right hand's probably the overhook hand. Go ahead and hide that right wrist. Grab that palm, and you're gonna take that right thumb and jam it in their chest. And you're gonna start rolling that right thumb around until you find the lapel grip. And now with the lapel grip, you're gonna start walking that right hand higher and higher on the collar. My left hand just falls off, grabs the far lapel. We're ready to rock and roll. My chin hugs their shoulder so I can walk my hips back. So I stay leaning forward, but my hips get far away so I can take my right leg, throw it off. My left leg, throw it across the belly button. My right leg's gonna hook the shoulder. I cross my ankles. It's choke city time. Extend the hips, extend the arms, finish. Very nice, we're right back to it. Same thing for you lower belts. If you see the triangle, go ahead and attack it. If you need a refresher, guys, we'll, tech, we'll check out uh, our intermediate class this week with uh, Professor Elliot. You can see that on Easton Online. That's got a great explanation of the back triangle and it ties right into the choke you're learning right now. Coach. Here we go, let's here. keep finishing. Good harness grips, perfect. Hiding that top hand, wiggling that right thumb until you get a hold of the lapel and start walking that right hand higher up the collar, defending that wrist with your left hand and once you're ready, left hand drops off, grabs the lapel. I'm ready. I hug the shoulder with my chin. I walk my hips back so my right leg can fall out. At the same time, my left leg can fall across the belly. My right leg will hook the shoulder. I'll cross my ankles. 
whole body finishes with extension. Nice. How's it feel, Thomas? Give me a thumbs up. Feels good? Perfect. Perfect. There we go. Nice. How's it feel, Lana? It's going well? Yeah, double thumbs. I like it. Coach, is your top yes. the one that uh, grabs the, or that stirs the mac and cheese to grab the lapel? Uh-huh. Yeah, that right hand looks perfect. What, does that feel okay? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah, we go right leg over the shoulder, extend the body, attack the choke. Very nice, my friends. Whew. All right, guys, so we'll go ahead and break. I'm gonna change the camera angle a bit so I can stand up. We'll fix our geese, line up. Hold on, stuffy Steve. Take a break, buddy. You're great. Whew. Nice work, my friends. Uh, again, I, I appreciate you so much. About everybody here who's making time to find their jujitsu time, I think that's really important for me personally. Uh, I know that uh, jujitsu has kind of been that place where life can be crazy outside, right? And obviously, never experienced anything like this. But, uh, you know, we've all had ups and downs, right? We've all had those moments where things are really hard for us. And no matter how tough it got outside, when I would walk into the school, put on my gi and walk into jujitsu, it's like everything had the volume turned down, right? And not in a way where I'm trying to avoid it, but through the training, being with my community, with my jujitsu family, it makes it a little easier for me to think my way through the things that are so difficult for me outside of the mats, right? This place where I can come and kind of relax, take a big deep breath, get back into what's happening right now, right? Right now, James is trying to choke me out, right? I'm not worried about a TPS report or uh, something else maybe as terrible as what's going on right now even. What I'm doing is paying attention to the moment, right? I'm getting very, very present. And I think that's really important. I think it's maybe the most important thing jiu-jitsu has ever taught me or is teaching me. This idea that so many times uh, my suffering, the things that are going on for me, it's just awful. I'm making worse by the way that I'm thinking about it, right? My, my incessant just harping on it. My, uh, this is the only thing that matters to me right now. So much so that I can shrink down and get so small and forget about everything else that's going on in my life that I do enjoy, right? The things that are positive, the things that are going well. Uh, they're just happening at the same time as these other things that aren't going so great. But I'm listening to that awfulness as if it's turned up on loud. I can't hear anything else. I can't see everything else. Jiu-Jitsu helps me kind of clean the slate, right? Get back in and reset the audio a little bit to where this loud shit is turning back down, right? And I'm starting to recognize that, man, I have an incredible family. I'm a part of a community that loves me more than I would ever be able to express in words. Uh, this jujitsu has changed my life in so many ways. Again, I'll never be able to express it all with words. That's also going on. So while this is awful, my jujitsu community, the things I'm learning on the mats, uh, they're still here, right? They haven't went away. And as you notice, there's so many of us in here training tonight. There's so many of us that have been training all week in these Zoom classes. Uh, this doesn't go away. These people, this jiu-jitsu community is here for you, right? They're here for all of us. And I just want to say thank you because your participation is why it exists. So while I love the training, man, I just showed you some of my favorite secrets about the back. Like those are, those are the money makers when we get there, right? Uh, I've, I'm more excited to see everybody here helping themselves with the great art that's helped me, right? So thank you guys so much. Please take care of yourselves. Be as safe as we can. Uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in class for the rest of the week. We have a ton of classes on the schedule, including Muay Thai, as well as kids, Muay Thai, and Jiu-Jitsu.
right? So there's stuff for the whole family, guys. We're even going to have some auxiliary stuff like some yoga and some strength trainings. So please keep your eye out on the schedule. Check out your email and social media. We'll have more information as these things develop. Again, thank you guys so much. We'll bow out. If you want to stick around, please do. We'll make sure everybody's off mute so I can hear you.